For each assignment that you are a registered marker, a spreadsheet that corresponds to the course code of that assignment, be it group or individual, will be sent to you by your course administrator. When you open the grading spreadsheet, make sure you have chosen Enable Content so that you can make changes to the document. Upon enabling, you will be prompted with a dialog box asking you to log in. Enter your GUID and select from the drop-down menu whether you are first or second marker on this assignment. You should automatically begin on the first tab entitled Data Entry. In row one will be information on the course code and the assignment you are grading. Row two will contain your course coordinator and administrator details. This is all information that will generate automatically based on the assignment code and will not need to be edited or changed by you. You will only be able to write or change information in the yellow boxes. Refer to row three, where you will click on the yellow box beside student. This could also say group if you're marking a group assignment. If you click on this, a dialog box will open where you can select the student or group by their number from the list in the drop down menu. This list is also specific to the assignment and will only contain students that are on that assessment code. If this is a group assignment, it will list group numbers, not individual students. Beside the student selection, you will have the chance to choose which question you will be grading. The drop down menu is generated per assignment, so will show the possible question numbers of that assignment. Should the assignment require students to answer more than one question, you will need to go through this process once for each question that they have answered. Press OK when you've selected the appropriate options. Notice that the student and question numbers have populated in the yellow boxes at the top of the page. If the wrong student has been selected, you must cancel the current form before you can select another student. You can do this by clicking on one of the grey rectangular buttons in the top right corner. Whenever you are choosing to cancel, your changes will be lost, so a dialog box will notify you if you are trying to cancel without saving. If you have already entered information into the form before realising the student number is wrong, please refer to our video section about the clipboard function. This is a method where you can save your written comments without saving them to the wrong student record and or needing to fill them out from scratch again. Once you have selected your chosen student in question, you will be able to see any grades or comments already inputted for that record. This will be shown in row 3, next to grade 1, grade 2 and agreed grade, and in the comments boxes. In order to input your grade, click on the relevant grade box. This will open another dialog box which contains a drop down menu for first marker grade, second marker grade and agreed grade. If you are the first marker, the second marker option should be greyed out. Similarly, as a second marker, the first marker option will be unavailable to you. However, for both, you will also be able to enter an agreed grade. Once you have selected an appropriate grade, click the OK button to input this into the feedback sheet. Please note, clicking OK here does not save the grade for that student into the spreadsheet, and if you close the sheet at this stage, all this information will be lost. In order to save the data and make this entry permanent and available for further users, you must click the update button in the top right hand corner. Now you can begin to make your comments in the larger yellow boxes beneath row four. There are three boxes, each with a description over the top of the feedback that you should include in that box. When making comments in these boxes, you have the option to increase or decrease their size depending on how much feedback you have to give. As a second marker, these buttons may reveal comments that the first marker has made if they have entered a large amount of feedback in that section. When writing comments, be sure to remember you are doing so in Excel and not in a Word document, so some settings may be different than you are used to. Please double click on the box to ensure you have selected it to become a text box. Your mouse cursor will change from an arrowhead to a text line. Once a box has been selected, you can navigate within it the same way as any other text box. Please be careful when moving between text boxes. If you have forgotten to double click the box before entering any text, all previous markers comments will be deleted. To fix this, you can click undo in the quick access toolbar in the top left, control Z from a PC or command Z from a Mac. If you have left the comments box before realising the previous comments have been deleted, you will have to cancel the current form without updating it to restore this information. Once again, here the clipboard function may be of use to save you time when re-entering your comments in the restored record. 
Also, when in a comments box, be careful when hitting the enter bar, as this does not skip to the next line of text, but instead to the next row of the Excel document. If you wish to create a new line of text, you can do so on a PC by pressing Alt and Enter, or on a Mac by using Command Alt and Enter. Once you have finished entering your comments into the first comments box, you can then move on to the next section. You can do this by double clicking on the next comments box. When leaving a comment box, if there is a spelling mistake or unrecognised word included in that box, you will be prompted with a spell check box. This spell check notification will continue to come up for every misspelling or unrecognised word whenever you move between comment or grade boxes. Please do not ignore this. This impacts on all further users, as if you leave a misspelled word, spell check will continue to prompt you and further users to fix this on every move between comment boxes on this record. This will also happen if you choose to ignore the word. So please, if spell check does not recognise something you have written that you know to be correct, add it to the dictionary. When you are on an open record, you will not be able to modify a previous user's grade, but you are able to make edits in the comments sections. Once you've completed your record with your grade and comments, please make sure to click the update button in order to save your data. Alternatively, if you wish to remove the information you have included on a record, you can click the cancel button. This will close the record for that student in question, but not save any of the changes that you have made to it. If you are the second marker, or not the first user to make entries on a record, please do not click the delete button. This does not just delete the information you have put in yourself if you are the second marker, but removes all entries permanently. It will wipe all history of grades and comment entries on that record. Only use the delete button if you have entered information into a record for a student that did not submit the assignment, or you are the first person to open that record. All information which has been previously inputted and updated into the spreadsheet by any grader will appear in the second tab titled Grade Sheet. You cannot make any changes to information on this sheet for the fields of Student ID, Question Number, Grades or Marker ID. And if you click on these, a dialog box will appear to inform you of this. If there are any mistakes in these fields, you will have to open the appropriate record back in the Data Entry tab to adjust it from there. This sheet is designed as a quick method of editing comments provided on student records to save you reopening that record in the data entry tab. Again, care needs to be taken when editing records as this will act as an Excel spreadsheet, not a Word document. As before, double click the text box before entering text to make sure you don't write over all previous comments and use enter and alt to move down a line. Please note, if you change the comments in the grade sheet tab, you must use the save icon in the left hand top corner to make sure that these changes become permanent. Alternatively, select file and save the record. Then you can move on to the third tab, which is the distribution tab. In this tab, there will be a chart which visually displays the grades which have been entered. This populates a graph either with the agreed grade that has been entered or the first marker grade. If an agreed grade is present for a record, this will be the grade that appears in the graph. If a second marker has entered a different grade to the first grade, this will not show here until these markers discuss their disagreements and enter an agreed grade. In row 1, there is a yellow box in which you can choose from a list of markers and questions. These are the markers and question numbers that have had a record saved on this grade sheet. This allows you to see the data and grades which are being given by different markers, grades given on different questions, or alternatively to display the data which has been inputted by all markers in order to see what range of grades are being given to the students on this assignment. You can choose to view this graph for one or all markers, or for a single or all questions on the assignment. This data does not provide student numbers in relation to grade, but is just a means of showing the distribution of grades awarded by markers for the assignment.